Mastering the mental. Some say mind over matter. I say the mind matters. If there's one thing I wish I had known much earlier in life is that the difference between the life I have today and the future life I could have, well, it's all in my head, literally. Here are some things I wish I had known much earlier in life. Self-talk is just as important as physical practice. Bad things will happen, but there are always things that you can be grateful for. The only limits, those are the ones you place on yourself. Your circle really matters. Daily affirmations spoken aloud will imprint in your mind. And visualization, well, that can make all of the difference. How do I know? Well, let me tell you about the first time visualization really came into play for me. I grew up playing racquetball competitively. I had a sponsorship with Head and everything. So hours and hours of practice were spent on the little box at my gym. I had a coach, his name was Pete, and we also would spend hours together every week. So one evening we were on the court and we decided that we should work on my forehand stroke. So he took a racquetball can that held two blue balls and put it on the front wall and then backed me up about three quarters of the way on the court. He said to me, so hit the target. Well, we'd done this drill before, so I knew it was possible, not improbable, but I also knew that it was hard. And so I took a couple swings and missed the can, but not by much. So he's like, okay, keep going, try it again. So I took a couple more swings and boom, I hit the can. The lid exploded, the can was dented, felt very powerful. So Pete went and got the lid and put the can back together and put it back on the front wall. And I was like, great, cool, gonna do it again? And he was like, yeah, but why don't you go out and take a bandana off of your racquetball bag and come back in with that? I was like, hmm, that was a little suspicious. Pete was kind of a crafty one, so I definitely had my guard up, but I did as I was instructed. I went out, grabbed a red bandana, came back in, and he said, okay, so put it on as a blindfold. I was like, excuse me, what? He's like, put it on like a blindfold. I was like, oh no, what are we gonna be doing? So I did as instructed and he set me kind of up. He said, okay, peek out from under the blindfold and get everything lined up, see where you're at and take a look at the can on the front wall. So I did all that and put the blindfold back down and then he handed me the little blue ball and he goes, okay, hit the can. I was like, what? I can't hit the can, you you, I can't even see the can. He's like, okay, take a look at the can again. Now close your eyes and see it in your mind. I was like, oh man, we're paying this guy and everything? I was like, okay. So I'm like, I don't even know I'm supposed to hit the ball. How am I gonna throw it in the air and hit it with my racket when I can't even see it? He's like, just try it. So I did and I made contact and I heard the ball hit the front wall but I didn't hear the can. So he tracked the ball back down, put it back in my hand and said, try it again. And I did, and I heard it hit the front wall, but nothing happened. So he gave me the ball again and he said, try it again. And I did. And this time I heard the can explode. I ripped off the bandana. I don't know who was more shocked, me or Pete. But Pete actually wasn't as shocked as I was because Pete was smiling. He's like, see? I knew you could hit the can. I was shocked. I couldn't believe that the, my mind had seen the can, seen the ball, and made the ball hit the racket in the middle of the head, so much so that I had the can explode. So I was like, cool, let's do it again. And he's like, ah, let's do something different this time. So he left the court and went and got a trash can. And he put the trash can at the front wall. Hmm, well, this is a little taller and this was a little harder because I was used to making sure that the little blue ball just came inches off the ground. I was like, well, now what? Like, that's not gonna be hard. Like, I can hit that easily. He's like, yeah, no, I want you to lob the ball into the can. I go, you want me to put the ball in the trash can? He's like, yeah. He's like, go ahead, take the bandana off, try it a couple times. So I did, again, 
close. Took me a few times, then finally I got it in the can. He's like, okay, put the bandana back on. And I did. And he's like, okay, put it in the can. I did it on the first try. He goes, you did it. I ripped the bandana off. I was like, wow. And that really, really imprinted in my mind. At that point, I spent a lot of time realizing that this could be a game changer for me. I was a pretty self-aware teenager. And as a result, I was definitely aware that I'd just gotten a smidge of athleticism from the parental gene pool. And I was gonna need other tips and tricks in order to make sure that I could compete at and stay at a high level in the sport of racquetball. Since that time, I have fully embraced the power of my mind and I put it into play regularly. Here's something else that I'm fully committed to doing. Positive self-talk. Well, this one's harder. I think we're all just kind of conditioned to look at the bad side of things instead of the good side of things. Years later, I've given up racquetball, but I took up competitive tennis. So I play on a USTA women's team. I've been doing this for years, like over 20. And I've taken all the things that I learned from my days in racquetball and applied them to the tennis court. As a result, I have a pretty nasty forehand slice. But those aren't the things that I really put into play. Uh, at my age, let's be honest, like the game of tennis, yeah, it's mostly mental for me. And so the power of positive thinking throughout a match becomes critical. When I get down a little bit, maybe I'm behind on a set or maybe I'm having a bad game or maybe my backhand's just not on today, I know that I'm gonna have to ramp up the positive self-talk in my head. So when positive things happen, I'm my own cheerleader. I gotta bring my own pom-poms to the court. Good job. Seems like your serve is really on today. Let's make sure that that out wide serve continues to perform. And then I repeat to myself throughout the entire match, this one phrase, you're the winner, not a winner, the winner. I'm going to be the winner of this game, this set and this match. So I've taken all of these things that I've learned over the years as a competitive athlete and I've applied them to my own business. I spend a lot of time thinking about what it will look like when I'm on a big stage speaking to thousands of people, you know, at an arena. I also think about what it'll be like when my first book launches and I'm at a book signing event. I also think about what it'll be like when I get a new client. I spend a lot of time with my eyes closed, visualizing what I'll be wearing, what it'll sound like, but most importantly, what it'll feel like. I truly believe that I can make these things happen and I can make sure that my mind also agrees by spending time doing this. Here's something that I picked up later in life. I definitely wasn't thinking about doing something like this and nobody had suggested it back when I was a teenager playing competitive racquetball at a high level. So affirmations, something new. This is something that's really come into my life just a few years ago. So I wasn't really sure what to do with this when someone said, you know, do you do positive out loud affirmations? I wasn't even sure what they were talking about. How is that different than self-talk, I asked. Well, a lot of times the positive self-talk, that may happen internally in your head, but maybe not out loud. Have you ever tried to speak out into the universe what you want the future to look like? Hmm, nope, hadn't done that. What does that sound like? So instead of asking the person who offered that up, I you know, went to Google and did some research on affirmations. And I got some tips and tricks. And so I have put affirmations into play every single day. I actually use them almost exclusively for professional and work situations as opposed to my competitive tennis game. So here are some of the things that I wake up every day saying to myself. Today is the best day for fill in the blank. So I'll give you some examples. Today is the best day for financial abundance. Today is the best day to start a new relationship. Today is the best day to land a new client. Today is the best day to make a new friend. Recently, I finished writing my book and was hoping to get a publishing deal. I had a couple of suitors and one morning I got a rejection letter. I wasn't surprised, but it was still kind of disappointing. So I really had one other on the hook. So I was like, well, 
this is it. Got to throw all your eggs into that basket. And so I'd had an interview with the owner of the publishing company. And he told me that they had to take a vote. And there were five of them. His vote was yes. So one down, two to go. So he was going to have to convince two other people in the committee to take my book, accept it and publish it. So he told me that Wednesday of next week was when the meeting was going to happen. Well, that's all I needed to hear. Every single day, from the day I talked to him till the Wednesday morning meeting when I knew it was going to happen, I woke up every day and said, today is the best day to get a publishing deal with said publisher. I didn't just say it actually in the morning. I said it every time it popped into my head. I said it out loud. Today is the best day to get a publishing agreement over and over and over. We'd made a decision to meet the Friday after the Wednesday meeting, and it was on the calendar and everything. You know me, we never get off the phone until we have another firm meeting scheduled. And so as Wednesday came, I thought, well, I know the meeting's probably already taken place, but what's the harm? So all day on Wednesday, I kept saying, today is the best day to get a publishing deal. And at about two o'clock in the afternoon, I got an email from the owner of the publishing company letting me know that he'd secured the two other votes that he needed. I was like, wow, so excited. I told everybody, you know what? And I really thought about it. I thought as I was telling people about the situation and kind of the, how it had played out, I openly told people about my out loud positive affirmations. And my friend Susan turned to me and she said, you're even starting to convince me. So I hope that I convince you too. Again, what do you have to lose? Why don't you start each morning by saying, today is the best day for something you've been dreaming about. About two and a half to three years ago, I met a woman named Michelle at a mastermind group that I belong to called Kick-Ass Chicks. Again, reminder, your circle matters. Well, I was a little surprised to learn that Michelle had her own business as a hypnotherapist. Hmm, again, not really sure what she did. Sounded a little mm, woo-woo. So I asked her out to lunch. I was curious and wanted to learn more. So she told me that she'd been practicing hypnotherapy for 20 years and that she helped people do everything from quit smoking to lose weight to find the man of their dreams. I was intrigued, but it was really just a friendly lunch. So fast forward a few months and things were going pretty well, but I just wanted a little more juice. I felt like things were getting a little bit stressful in my life and I wanted to make sure that all the positive things that I was doing for myself were gonna work out and put me in the right frame of mind. So I thought, mm, maybe I should call Michelle. So I did. So I called Michelle and I told her what was going on. And I said, I think I might wanna add you to my professional inner circle. And she's like, well, what did you have in mind? And I said, well, I'd like to try out this hypnotherapy thing. And she was like, great. She's like, do you have something specific that you want to do? And I said, well, no, I think initially I just want you to fill my head full of positivity. So there are a lot of exciting things happening right now. And sometimes imposter syndrome and self-doubt creeps in. She said, okay. So we set up a time and I headed over to her office. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. And so she kind of talked me through what it would be like. And I put on these really fancy goggles that had a blinking light in them. And I put on a headset with some white noise on it and I could hear her through the headset. So she said she was gonna sort of guided, give me a guided tour in my brain, but making sure that I was filling it with positivity. So I kind of sat back in the lazy boy and put on a blanket. So I was all toasty warm and she started to work me through some breathing exercises. Well, I'm always tired, so this seemed like a really good idea and I was afraid I might fall asleep. As she got me in the right mental frame of mind through the breathing exercises, I started to settle in. She asked me to start thinking about energy within my body. And she asked me to take the energy in my brain and transfer it to my fingertips. And right away, I could feel my fingertips tingling. Hmm, this is interesting, I thought. Then she said, let's, let's go ahead and move it down the rest of your body, like through your torso and through your legs and into your feet and your toes, which I also started to feel like tingling. So, hmm, this is interesting. I'd always really believed in the mind-body connection, but I'm not sure I'd really ever put it into play just like this. So over the next 30 or 35 minutes or so, Michelle filled my head with positivity 
and good thing, good thoughts. I told her about all the exciting things going on professionally and that I wanted these things to work out. Things like the book and speaking engagements and new clients that I was really excited about. And about 35 or 40 minutes later, she brought me out. I was really refreshed. I woke up feeling great. She said hypnotherapy and going under like that is worth about eight hours of sleep, which I was grateful for. She's like, your mind was listening, even though your body might have been resting. And she'd recorded the session. So she said to me, like, it'll get easier for you over time if you'll listen to the recording while we're not together. And so I did. And over the last two and a half to three years, I meet with Michelle quarterly and I tell her what's going on. Recently, I told her, I said, you know, there's a lot of balls in the air and I'm feeling really anxious and stressed about that. Can you like just fill my head with you've got this and everything's going to be just fine and everything you want to happen is actually going to happen? And she did. That might have been just a few weeks before I got my book deal, by the way. Michelle says I'm hypno friendly. I think this is because I believe in the 12th man. The 12th man is a concept that they talk about in football. You may or may not know, but there are only 11 players on any given team on the field. Who's the 12th man then you ask? Well, those are the hometown fans. When the hometown's behind the eight ball and they need a touchdown or they need a field goal, they rally the fans. The teams really believe that the fans can really take them places that they couldn't go with just the 11 of them on the field. I believe this concept too, which is why I believe that you have to be your own fan club. You have to bring your own pom-poms, be your own cheerleader, use positive self-talk, use out loud affirmations. And if you're so inclined, grab yourself a hypnotherapist and have them fill your head with all of those things on a regular basis. So I know that hypnotherapy and things like that maybe aren't for everybody. And maybe positive affirmations would be easier for you if you were home alone or you did them in the bathroom or the shower, which is fine. But everybody needs a little positive self-talk in their life. Everybody needs to believe that the future is going to be brighter than the present. And it can be. So wrapping all this up, let's go back to my earlier statement. Some say mind over matter. Again, I say the mind matters. So use your mind to do the things that you can't physically do right now that you could do if you just put your mind to it. If you like this video and you want other tips and tricks like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm putting out new content all the time. Until then, take care. Have a great day.